This week on MC Rider, we're going to talk about parking your motorcycle, and I'll share three things that you should never do when you're parking your motorcycle. So before we get into this video, I've had a lot of you asking me how you can get one of these. I'll tell you at the end of the video, they're in very limited supply. So you'll want to stick around and watch the video all the way to the end. I can tell you how to get one of these hats, but we'll get to that in a minute. So tip number one is what this rider did. Can you guess what his issue was? Never, never, never leave your motorcycle in neutral when you park it, especially if you're parking it on any kind of slope, because that's what happened here. I bet this rider walked back out into the parking lot and thought someone had tried to steal his motorcycle, but it was actually his fault because he left the motorcycle in neutral. And even though it was a slight incline, gravity eventually got to the bike and it fell over. So leaving your motorcycle in gear acts as a parking brake for your motorcycle and can keep you from walking back out to your motorcycle and realizing that you've done something wrong when you see it laying over in the parking lot. If you got a DCT motorcycle, you've got to make sure that you set the parking brake on it and remember to release it whenever you ride off. You know, that was one of the toughest things for me to get used to on the Goldwing. And I'd say I never totally got used to it. Setting that parking brake whenever I would park it didn't seem to be that big of an issue, but remembering to turn the thing off whenever I got ready to ride away was an issue and I'd often start forward and wonder why the gold wing had suddenly lost all its power it's because I failed to release the parking brake on it. So if you're in a DCT, your parking brake works. If you're on a standard motorcycle, you want to leave that motorcycle in first gear because that acts as your parking brake when you're parked on an incline. Tip number two, never, never, never pull forward into a downward sloping parking spot. So what do I mean by that? Let's pull up Valentino Rossi here. We'll use him as an example. If you're pulling into a parking spot and that parking spot leans forward, if you pull in and park like that, right, you get off the motorcycle, put the kickstand down. When you come back, you try to get that motorcycle out. Now you've got to push it up that hill or up that incline sport bike it may not be that big of a deal i've had small bikes that i could push up a fairly decent incline if i get on my indian challenger though and try to push that 800 pound beast up a slight incline it's not wanting to go so what you need to do if the parking lot is sloping forward or parking space is sloping forward pull up back up go into the parking spot you can leave your bike there, that way when you get on, you use the power of the engine to pull you out of that parking spot. No harm, no foul. Just make sure you're not parking your motorcycle with the front tire facing downward, or you may be in for a surprise when you come out and get ready to leave on your motorcycle. Number three, never, never, well, most of the time never, leave your helmet perched on your motorcycle seat, you know, when you're getting off your motorcycle or you're off your motorcycle, you're getting all your gear ready. The temptation is to set your motorcycle helmet down on the seat and leave it there while you're getting the rest of your gear on. That is oftentimes a mistake. You know, motorcycle helmets are expensive. My Shoei RF 1400 helmet that you can see in the background there costs a little over $500. So when you're in the process of mounting and dismounting your motorcycle, you know, when you're standing around getting all your gear on, it's a bad habit to set that down on the seat, especially if you're on a motorcycle that's got a thin seat because, you know, it can get you in trouble if that helmet rolls off of the seat and crashes down. The last thing you want to see is your $500 investment bouncing around on the pavement. You know, one option is to put it on the mirror. So I've got few motorcycles that I can perch the helmet up on the mirror and then the mirror acts as a, a stand to help hold the helmet up there. On my Rocket 3, I can use that rear, the passenger backrest is a perfect place. I can set my helmet right down on top of that and it's very secure. So I can use that whenever I'm getting my gear on and off as I'm getting 
on or off the motorcycle. That backrest works, you know, is a great perch. On the Challenger, the seat is wide enough probably, but I generally just set, open the rear trunk up and I set the helmet in there while I'm getting all the rest of my gear on. It's a, you know, cheap insurance to keep from seeing your helmet bounce around on the pavement. You know, so let's talk about your helmet falling on the pavement and how big of an issue that really is. You know, they say if you drop a helmet, you'll hear some people say if you drop a helmet, you should never wear it again after that. That's kind of true. You know, if your helmet hits the pavement and your head is inside of it, what happens is that internal, that foam lining compresses and that causes a weak spot in the helmet. So, you know, my general rule of thumb, if your head hits the pavement, or your helmet hits the pavement with your head inside of it, you probably want to look at getting a new helmet. But you don't have that weight inside of it. You know, if the helmet just falls off the seat and drops to the ground, it's going to scuff it up, obviously. But it's probably not going to do enough to compress the foam. But there's no guarantees of that either. But the general rule uh, is if your helmet's in, your head's in the helmet and it hits the pavement, probably need to replace it if it's just a you know a normal drop on the pavement it's probably going to be okay where it does cause damage and these are also expensive it scratches the face shield up you know i have dropped a couple and i always get these scratches in the face shield which drive me nuts driving down the road and you got this big scratch running across your line of sight it's even worse when the sun hits it and starts reflecting off of it so that becomes an expense. If you drop your helmet, you'll scratch the visor up and those things can cost 50 or 60 bucks to replace them. So make sure you secure that helmet, use the mirrors, use the passenger backrest or set it on the pavement if you don't have any of those options. That's better than setting it on a narrow seat and watching your helmet fall off, you know, with a gust of wind or you bumping into it and bouncing around on the pavement. So many of you have asked where you can get one of the hats like I wear in the MC Rider video. I used to outsource this and uh, would send it off to an embroidery shop and I wasn't always real happy with the hats that I would get back. Sometimes I'd have to exchange them or send them back with that company. So I decided to start making my own and producing these leather patch hats. So I'm happy to announce that I've got a few of these available for MC Rider viewers. I've got, you know, a black and gray hat like I've got with the patch on the front of it. I've got an all black hat um, with the patch. And then I've got a black and tan hat with the patch on there as well. So I've got three different styles. These patches, I make these myself right here in the MC Rider garage. I buy veg tan leather. I cut these patches out and I either laser the logo onto it. I've got a laser that can do that or on some of them I press the logo into it. I had a custom die made so I can press the logo into it. Then I let that sit for a day and then I finish the, the uh, patch with you know a stain or some kind of die and then a top coat on it and then finally I sew these onto the hat. So it takes about three days to produce one of these hats, you know, parts of three days uh, to produce them. And I've got, you know, a few of them ready now to be able to sell. And in addition to the hats, I make uh, keychains. So I've got keychains like this that's got the MC Rider logo on one side, and then I stuck a See You on the Road on the other side. So I've got the fob style keychains. That's what this is, is a fob style and also what I'm calling a biker style keychain that's more like this. It's got a, a snap on it so you can snap that onto a belt. And I've got these available also on there. These are a biker style with the MC Rider logo on it. So go to mcrider.com slash hat and you can purchase one of these hats for yourself. If you purchase a hat and a keychain at the same time, I'll give you 10% off on the keychain. So a uh, save you shipping you know on the keychain uh, if you order both of them together but if you want one of these and it's I wouldn't be surprised if these sell out today the day that this video goes live I don't have a whole lot of them you know obviously these are what I can make right here in the MC Rider garage I make these myself 
So the supply on them is limited. So if you want one, you probably should go pretty quick within the time that you see this video. Again, go to mcrider.com slash hat and you can get all the details on ordering a hat in one of these different styles. And while you're at it, order a keychain and you can save money there as well. Make great Christmas gifts. And hopefully I can get all these shipped out, you know, before Thanksgiving, if the orders come in quick enough, I can get that shipment sent out to you before Thanksgiving comes around before I head out for Thanksgiving break. So I won't be here next week. There'll be no video next week. I'll be out spending time with family for the Thanksgiving holidays. So I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. And until next time, guys, this is Kevin with MT Rider, and I'll see you on the road.